Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a discovery and an analysis of a very interesting cluster of galaxies known as Abel 3391 and 3395. The clusters that the scientists have discovered are actually colliding and are creating a perfect opportunity for the scientists to try to prove or disprove a lot of theories about the universe. And more specifically, these galactic cluster collisions are actually presenting the evidence for what we already believed about the cosmic web, the vast formation of galactic dust and dark matter that seems to be all over the universe and seems to be connecting all of the galaxies together. But these recent observations are also showing us that this is basically how a lot of matter propagates in the universe, serving as a kind of a highway for a lot of different materials going from one place to another. Which of course sort of confirms a lot of theoretical predictions, but it's always great to see this observationally as well. Now first of all, even though the cosmic web was predicted for a very long time, the actual pictures, the first pictures of the cosmic web, have only been created a few years ago, so this was a theoretical concept for a very long time. But a lot of modern interpretations of the universe and a lot of modern theories, including of course the idea behind dark matter, actually directly rely on the existence of this unusual formation. So in a nutshell, if we were to kind of zoom out and try to imagine the universe as it sort of looks like in real life, and here this means zooming out and moving away far far away from the Milky Way galaxy and actually looking at this picture from a really really distant perspective. If we could actually see in different light spectra, so not just optical light, if we could also see x-rays and infrared observations, we would start detecting something resembling this sort of a network. A network composed of these tunnels or these highways where a lot of gas and a lot of different material always circulates and always goes from one place to another, with extremely large voids that usually don't contain much in between them. But what's been predicted for a very long time but has never really been seen is that along these highways a lot of galaxies actually move as well. Each of these central clumps right here that you see, these are different galactic clusters and they're sort of guided by these highways, by the cosmic web, into different directions. And the more observations we seem to get from the cosmic web, the more we realize how it's really controlling everything in the universe. It seems to be guiding and leading things around. Which of course makes this the central part of the entire universe, the foundation of the universe. The universe itself sort of depends on the structure. Or at least we thought so in theory, or based on various simulations and various calculations. In reality though, this was very very difficult to prove. Especially because there have been a lot of alternative theories, a lot of alternative propositions trying to explain some of the unexplained mysteries of the universe. Well now, once again, the scientists were able to expand on one of the previous studies that was analyzing these particular clusters right here. So these are galactic clusters, meaning that several galaxies are present in them and they seem to be colliding together. Here's what this might look like if you were to look at it in three dimensions with each of the dots representing some sort of a galaxy. And in this case, the scientists were focusing on a previously discovered cosmic filament that is visible sort of right here that's roughly around 50 million light years in length. This was discovered approximately a year ago and presented an excellent opportunity for the scientists to try to figure out what happens inside the cosmic web when various clusters move through it. And so this time, by using a lot more data from a lot of other telescopes, including infrared telescopes such as ASCAP in Australia, the dark energy camera that provided optical observations, and the XMM Newton that provided the X-ray observations, the scientists behind several papers you can find in the description below were able to discover and describe a lot of interesting phenomena happening inside of these galactic clusters. Now in this particular case they focused on this region right here known as the Northern Clump and the other two clusters visible in this image as well and try to work out what exactly is happening in between them based on multi-frequency observations. Now here in this particular image it's not entirely clear. And also if you look at this in visual light it's also not entirely clear. But once you start combining some of the other frequencies, here's sort of what we start seeing in this northern clump. This region seems to have these two unusual protrusions going in two different directions. And though it might not be entirely clear what it is right away, it was pretty clear to the scientists studying this. This was a supermassive black hole in the middle of one of the galaxies in there and it was spewing out a lot of different materials close to the speed of light. In other words, it was an active galactic nucleus. 
But as you probably know, a lot of these astrophysical jets are generally propelled in two different directions and generally are more or less straight. They should not really have such bent formations. But in this case, something was definitely bending them pretty quickly. And although obviously it could be something to do with maybe magnetic fields or possibly some other interactions with the material close to the galaxy, the explanation given in the paper and the more likely explanation is that these galaxies were just actually moving extremely fast. With the main scientists even comparing this to a hair of a running girl. So in a sense because of the velocity of the collision between these two galactic clusters, as a lot of galaxies in this particular cluster move toward the other clusters, their actual velocity here seems to be quite great. So great as a matter of fact that it's causing the astrophysical jets to sort of behave as if they were in the wind with all of this happening along the line of the cosmic filament. And so all of these little pieces of evidence definitely suggest that the cosmic web here, or the cosmic filament that represents the larger web, is sort of guiding these galactic clusters, pushing them closer and closer to one another. But because of the distances involved, and also because all of this is in basically cosmic scales, we're obviously unable to see the actual velocity or to try to estimate motion in any other way. All of this is sort of moving sideways, so we're not actually going to be able to see any redshift or anything else. And eventually it's expected that all of these clusters will probably collide, creating an even larger cluster as a result. Something that of course was simulated many different times on various supercomputers, and something that the scientists are now pretty excited to finally observe for the first time. Well, not the actual collision, but just the signs of the collision potentially happening in the future. Now all of this is of course extremely important because, well first of all, it does sort of provide a lot of evidence for modern theories of cosmology. At the same time, it sort of gives us even more evidence for the existence of the cosmic web, for the existence of dark matter, and for this interplay of forces that we sort of physically kind of understand. But more importantly, it helps us explain the universe as we think it is. As this huge interconnected cosmic web of a lot of gas, a lot of different material that seems to move from one spot to another and that seems to be guided by the web itself. Something that we're learning more and more about as we discover new things out there. But since we've only really started discovering these things in the last few years, I can only imagine what we're going to know and what we're going to find in the next decade or so. So because of this, I'm actually super excited to learn more about this in some of the future studies. Well, that means that you should probably subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Either way, thank you so much for watching, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.